Uh, today's landscape is quite volatile. It's a high velocity world. It's infused with technology, whether we like it or not, it's in there. It's filled with uncertainty from time to time, unexpected changes. So how does the person in that work environment, how do they adapt to these rapid changes when the traditional way of doing this is do not change quickly, you hold things tightly and you control it. The competitive landscape within certain industries, groups, organizations, uh, it's dynamic. And we've had evidences of that just recently. You know, we, you can turn on the news and you can see changes all over the place that are affecting us. How do we adjust? How do we make the creative spirit still happen in this chaos? Uh, the challenges are often incomplete with the information. In other words, when it's, when it once hits us, do we know everything about it? No, we know part of it. However, we have associates and colleagues that may know more. Can we entertain their ideas, their thoughts? Can we take those inputs in and move forward in a positive way? So it's time to explore a little bit deeper. What are these barriers in the workplace that are halting or stalling social creativity? And how has the jazz ensemble, which works in, a environment, in an environment of social creativity while seemingly chaos is happening, how are they pulling it all together in a spontaneous way? So let's take a look. The first barrier that happens in the traditional workplace is let's avoid risk. You know, the big goof can go viral in seconds. Avoid risk. So managers or administrators or people who are organizing tend to say, um, let's safeguard our products. We'll just duplicate everything we've been doing and we'll do it over and over again because it works. Yes, it worked, but has it worked for this newer landscape? Will it work? Uh, we'll defend against ferocious competition. You know, no surprises. Well, the competition is happening, it's gonna happen anyway. You know, the world is going to keep changing anyway. There are surprises and they're more rapid. So our learning has to be rapid. Our adjustments have to be rapid. You know, so companies tend to be in groups or organizations, nonprofits, they all tend to, you know, we have our market. We know what our audience is. We don't have to worry if we just keep going for the same audience. And if we go for that same audience, we'll get the same types of profit margins. We'll stay afloat because we're appeasing these customers. However, what happens if it evaporates? We just watched a pandemic basically wipe out culinary industries all over the place let alone other in industries. They didn't know what hit them. Now, yes, a singular person in that operation may come up with the solution, but it's so much stronger when you have a collective of ideas that can input and help turn the ship in the right direction. So what does a jazz ensemble do? They abandon routines. And some people will say, are you kidding me? <laughs> they abandon routines? No wonder they're called jazz musicians. Well, <laughs> let's take a look at this for a second. In the context of a jazz operation or a performance, 
they are willing to step outside of routine zones. You know, it's it's not unusual for the bass player to say, gee, wow, I didn't know <laughs> the piano was going to do that. Well, let me try this. Let me compliment it this way. Oh, and the drummer says, that'd be perfect for the splash on the cymbal. These types of things are happening instantly. It appears that way but they're willing to move outside of the comfort zone. Can a, a business operation or a nonprofit operation, can they accept stepping outside of a comfort zone? Abandon habitual thinking. Well, when you do that, you, you start to create growth. You shift from predetermined solutions to spontaneity. You mean my coworker has a good idea? But I was told not to accept other ideas. I was told, stay to the course. Recognizing emerging coherence. You mean inside of this madness we're in at the moment, you mean there is a place where I can find something coherent and observe it and follow it to a something that blossoms into something amazing. Elevate performance and move beyond the expected. Now, another barrier, our second barrier, and, I, and I, I'm gonna sort of uh, give you a, a, a preview over, because of the short period of time that we have, I'm, I'm only gonna be able to cover a few of our barriers. Um, but I, I pulled out the ones that I think will be very meaningful to us. Second barrier is to resist change. In businesses uh, <laughs> and in administration, they tend to resist any kind of change. They move slow because there's a lot on the line. Managers guard against disruptions and mishaps. Well, why would they wanna do that? Um, well, because I don't wanna get in trouble. <laughs> Simple enough. Let's not go down that path. We know this works. Avoid stress. Adapt tunnel vision. Or as they used to say in the old cowboy movies, circle your wagons. But what if, no, we don't want to hear a but what if at this point. We only want to make sure that we are safe. Ironically, it may not be a safe place to go. Housekeeping is a habit that is hard to break. This is the way we do our routine. It's hard to break that. Traditional organizations feature static principles. I recently spoke to a, a director of a nonprofit organization and the person was uh, basically boohooing about, I can't get new audience. It's a new audience. Well, have you thought about some possibilities in social media? Oh, no, 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 no. Social media, that's the death of the world. Did you see the movie Idiosyncrasy? <laughs> Everyone's going to be reduced to one sentence or two word sentences. I said, well, what if you could be effective with two words? What if that could bring something that you didn't expect? What if it could reach out and, and absorb another audience you didn't understand before? So the solution that jazz ensembles do at this point is they develop explorative competence. They welcome experimentation because they realize and in during the process of experimenting, you learn by doing. You embrace a democratically shared reliance. I know I can depend on my keyboard player if I start to do something experimental during my improvisation. Belief in the potential of innovative moments. So when you're working in the workplace, did you notice that your coworker had an idea 
that started to make sense, but it just wasn't there yet. Ability to redirect, reinterpret, and defy the expected. You mean there is a way possibly we can do this? Let's talk about this some more. I think that idea has some merit. Rely on one another to adjust and amend paths. Because uh, I mentioned earlier, it is an age of rapid learning. It is an age of adjustments. And we are capable of doing that. So the third barrier, which happens very often in the, in the uh, traditional workplace, no mistakes allowed. You know, managers tend not to disclose problems and disappointments. Why? Because there's a fear that they'll have to defend it. So I'm not gonna do that. But uh, there's, uh, we have to make an adjustment here. No, no, not gonna do that. This is what we do. Gee, I went to Home Depot uh, a couple of months ago. I walk in, I ask the person that's basically in the aisle, who's a worker, uh, do you know if this price uh, applies to this product? I can't tell you. <laughs> Let me get somebody that knows. But she was that person's worker there and was never that was never shared with them. There's a need for some type of collective approach to get the most out of your workforce. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Managers create monuments of organizational breakdowns. Uh, you may be surprised how many different organizations will say, gee, you should never do that because you could imagine what happened when it, one time in our past, we had somebody that did X, Y, and Z. And oh my goodness, it was a catastrophe. So these horror stories become the lead, the lead of fear. And unfortunately, yes, there are gonna be some things that do not work, but that's all part of the learning curve. Pressure to pretend mistakes and mess ups just didn't happen. And then you'll notice also the hierarchy, whether you're a low level manager or administrator or a middle administrator or an upper administrator, you tend to approach problems differently because you're concerned about the report of the error. So what does the jazz musician do in this ensemble? They create an environment where performance is part of the experiment, ex, uh, <clears throat> experiment, experiment, um, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm getting a little dry mouth here. I'm moving along here. <clears throat> uh, I have an image here on Miles Davis, who's a famous musician. And he says, you know, if you're not playing a mistake, it is a mistake. In other words, he's saying, if you're not alert to the possibilities of what can happen and you're fearful of doing, you will be in a mistake. <clears throat> so here's how they counter this. Build a culture that allows constructive failures. I love that word, constructive failures. We know there may be failures, but we're gonna build to the solution. Convert trials and errors to learning opportunities. So the jazz performer, if the <clears throat> lead performer is a saxophone player and he's playing, he's playing his beautiful solo and he happens to play in the wrong register. And I'm to be, to try to keep this in a layman's terms, you know, he plays wrong notes in certain places. You know, and someone else hears that and they say, oh my goodness, fantastic. I didn't know you were playing a sharp 15th. <laughs> I wasn't trying to play that. I was just trying to get to the right note. But it inspired me. I now will do this. 
and it can happen in the workplace. Someone says, well, you know, gee, maybe we should just uh, meet our customers differently when they walk in. And someone says, that's a great idea. No, I didn't really mean it. I was just saying that. Well, there are beautiful ideas within sometimes errors. Freedom to tinker and to infuse a, a bright, uh, excuse me, brick riage. I always get a little twisted on that, of ideas. In other words, can we bring in, since we have a lot of ideas here that are diverse, can we bring in some of those ideas into our arsenal? Achieve full engagement via creative experimentation. You mean when a person is engaged, they are in that process of creative experimentation. If they feel some comfort in doing that and then will not get chastised by their fellow associates, that is a good place to be. Dislodge patterns to discover the wonderment of curiosity. And my final barrier that I want to uh, talk about here is control and lead. In the workplace, there are certain assumptions that systems need hierarchy to organize and to have some stable order. If we don't have managers telling us what to do, we can't do it. Well, that's an assumption. Individual leaders are the most important for keeping the organization on track. We have to have somebody at the top that is so spectacular that they get us there. Well, even Bill Gates will tell you it's his team that gets them there. He's just steering the boat, so to say, but it's what's happening underneath him. Organizations often standardize procedures to avoid changes, disruptions, and ambiguities. These are traditional work ways that organizations will just say they operate and they will work because they have. But we are again trying to address something that's new in our environment. So the jazz musician basically seeks freedom, freedom from constraints. They achieve coherence through continued dialogue and exchange. The jazz musician's dialogue is in the performance. The tones, the sounds that are going back and forth, it's continuous, it's ongoing. And there's an exchange there that can happen. And it has proven in the workplace when the social collective energies are happening and exchanges of ideas are happening, it will happen that they will notice coherence in it. Improvisers enter a flow of ongoing invention. Yes, spontaneous, ongoing. There's a shared awareness of a common task. This is really the basis of real team production and there'll be group process progress, excuse me. Professor Rowe? Yes. Can you hear me? Our time is done. <laughs> Do, are, we, are we done? Is this our last slide? That's our last two oh, lines. Go ahead. <laughs> Did I get that? Boy, that was uh, with a little deviation. <laughs> uh, I'll just say on these last two points here, consensus traps, basically group thinking that's out of fear. You agree with everything because you do not want to rock the boat mm -hmm. and encourages open source. Hopefully the open source concept is everyone contributes. Okay, so I, gee, I do appreciate you uh, having me here this morning. Um, and I will say that uh, in an age where that separates so many of us when trying to get to change, it would be wonderful when we learn how to socially 
engage each other for change. Mm 